Considering building a two-dimensional skyline sound diffuser, it's not hard, but it does take quite a bit of time. The finished product is impressive. It looks good, and it gives your audio a more natural sound by diffusing harsh and problematic frequencies amplified by your room. Stick around. In this video, I'll show you how I built mine and maybe give you a few ideas on how you can build yours. First, you need to start out with a frequency calculator. You need to determine the range of frequencies you're trying to diffuse. In my case, I'm focusing on the frequencies created by the human voice for spoken word, and I'm tuning my panels to 846 to 4,514 hertz. This is a little high, but my studio is sound treated with plenty of, of absorption, and my goal is to diffuse the brighter frequencies and absorb the lower frequencies. Also, logistically speaking, tuning to this frequency made the project much, much easier to build. At this frequency, the plan calls for the columns or the blocks to be one and a half inches in, in diameter. Uh, dimensional two by two lumber is actually cut one and a half inches by one and a half inches. So this means all my blocks would be sized properly and I'd only need to cut them down to length. And boy, there is a lot of cutting. The diffusion panel on the back wall is two feet tall by six feet long. And then the panel that's in the sound cloud of the ceiling is uh, four foot by four foot square. And then I also had some additional material left over and I created a smaller 18 inch by 24 inch panel. And it's also attached to the sound cloud. I began cutting my backing plywood to size, leaving a one and a half inch border along all of the edges for mounting. Mine aren't hung um, just directly onto the wall. They're actually inset into the walls. So that's my mounting system. Yours, yours may vary a little bit, but um, in order to screw into my studs and create, a, create them flush on the outside of the wall, I had to leave a place where I could actually screw through. So, um, also, I recommend using a minimum of half inch thick plywood. I actually use three quarters of an inch thick plywood. And this is to help add um, a little bit more uh, robust strength because these things are just massive. They're super huge, they're super heavy. And I don't think that, um, I don't think that like if you use something like a quarter inch plywood, like you just risk snapping the whole thing in half as you're trying to lift it or move it around or anything. Also, um, the thicker plywood will help the glue uh, as your project dries to keep the entire project from warping and curling. Uh, no matter what thickness you're using, I recommend that you clamp your, your plywood to your work table and then you begin gluing your blocks on. If you don't, the whole project's just going to warp and curl and bend and it's a pain in the butt. So just avoid that, clamp it, uh, clamp it to your table before you begin working. Next is laying out your plan grid onto the plywood. This is uh, extremely tedious and time consuming, but that's kind of the name of the game of this project. This step may not be necessary if you're able to follow your plan visually and be able to keep track of where you're at, but there are just so many little blocks and little squares and so many numbers that um, getting lost is very, very easy. So um, this was my best solution was just marking it all out on the wood like this. It's not foolproof though. I learned quickly that once I began uh, gluing, my layout became out of sync and um, was mostly used as a reference to keep my place mass-produced dimensional lumber isn't cut exactly the same each and every time and organic materials wood tends to um, have a lot of natural variation so if one of your blocks is a little bit larger or smaller than uh, the square that you have drawn or larger or smaller than than the block next to it 
a domino effect occurs and a cascade of alignment issues arise. I just stayed consistent with the plan. Whichever block was called for next is the block that I used, um, regardless of how square the project was or how it aligned with the previous blocks. Next, it's time to cut blocks, and boy, are there a lot of blocks. All in all, I think I cut over 2,200, and I did that twice. I added a 45-degree angle on the tips of my blocks. I read a study that showed this scattered the frequencies a little bit better. Um, I also had a know-it-all Instagram troll ridicule me for it, saying it was completely unnecessary. You know, I'm not sure, but logic would tell me that instead of frequencies reflecting directly off of a flat surface, such as if your block was cut, you know, at a square 90 degree angle, um, sound would then reflect according to the angle that it was cut if it was cut on an angle. Um, I noticed that some of the expensive pre-made panels that you can purchase have their block ends or column ends cut at an angle. Um, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel is going to work the best for you. The biggest advice that I can give uh, during this process is safety because it took me hours and hours and hours on the saw and you become mindless and that's when bad things can happen. So do your best to remain alert and conscious of what you're doing. You know, when you start getting around block 900, you don't you know, you're not paying attention like you were. So that's the biggest thing I can stress is just, just be careful. It's got the trailer unhooked, headed to Harbor Freight. It's a balmy nine degrees out. Let's go get a sander. Now that all the blocks have been cut, you have to sand them. So here you go. Now you get to sand all four sides of 2200 blocks. <laughs> uh, I didn't sand them perfectly, uh, but I did want to smooth out any rough spots and remove the splinters and stuff so that they would paint up somewhat nice. Again, this takes even longer than actually cutting the blocks. Wear a respirator and just try not to get your fingers caught. Now it's time to glue. Glue is the only thing holding this project together. So I recommend a quality strong glue. I use Tight Bond 3. Uh, I gave a light dab on the bottom of each block and then I smeared some along the sides where it would come into contact with the block next to it. Obviously some of the blocks are taller than uh, the other blocks. So there's no need to coat the entire side. Just, you know, put a little smear where the you know block is actually contacting another piece of wood um, also because i cut the angles on the tips of my blocks each block was rotated one quarter of a turn from the previous block and this just ensures that new, no two blocks side by side have the same the same angle again um can't stress this enough the project will warp the plywood underneath your backing board uh, will warp if you don't clamp it down um, as your glue is drying so you know if, if it does if you do end up warping it i, I just i'm afraid you're going to ruin your project um, there's just a tremendous amount of force because what you have to do to get this thing to sit flush on anything or to mount flush on a wall so you're gonna have to break that glue and um you know, when you've got a million blocks all glued together and you're trying to bend it back straight, you're just worried that the whole thing's going to snap or splinter or something. And you've spent so much time on this, you really don't want that to happen. So uh, clamp before you glue. I'm not sure what happened to the rest of my footage, um, but basically I used spray paint uh, to paint the, the whole thing up. and. It was difficult to get an even coat, especially down in the in the gaps 
the bottom of the thing where there where there are no blocks, you know, the blank spaces. And um, I think a real legit spray gun would have mer- worked much better than uh, like sp- spray paint in a can. Uh, overall, I think I have four coats on it. And now that my panels are up on the wall, it looks pretty good, you know, cause everything's up high and it's far away. Looks totally fine. If you get up close, you can see imperfections cause I didn't spend a ton of time sanding or you can see lighter coats where I couldn't get the nozzle. I couldn't get good uh, coverage in certain spots just because angles are weird and blocks are taller than other blocks. Um, but all in all, it, uh, it works. It looks good. Here are the panels mounted, and these things are heavy as hell. It uh, it took three of us to do the job. Two of them had to hold them in place, and then we actually had, uh, we made a dead man with a two by four to help as well. And then the, uh, so two of us holding and a dead man, and then the third person actually uh, went around screwing it into place. And, um, it's important that whatever you mount these two can can handle the weight. Um, make sure it's a solid surface and that you're using some lag bolts because I'm gonna guess that these things are somewhere around 250 to 300 pounds. Uh, they are very, very heavy. All in all, I love how this project turned out. Um, for one, they're functional acoustically they do make a significant difference with how things sound in this room and secondly they're just fun to look at they're kind of like these massive pieces of art um you can stare off and you know get just get lost like staring off into space at them for quite a while there's so many you know shapes and angles and um just depths and you know things to get lost into so on both accounts, um, I'm really happy with them as far as that's concerned. But the biggest thing that I can say about this project is that it is super time consuming. It's not hard at all, but it is very tedious and there's no way around it. And I'm not going to like, I don't think I'm exaggerating at all when I say that it. I think it took me about 80 hours to build these things. And um that's pretty spot on and I couldn't do it all at one one time so it, just the whole thing cluttered up my garage for weeks um, if it didn't take so long I would probably build some more of these just to put around the house because they are so cool looking and they really do help um, you know like throw it in a common area or uh, you know a place where you watch TV family room or something and um, they work well and they look really cool but boy is it a uh it's a long job to do them this big. So if you have the time, the end result is um, pretty impressive and I definitely say it's worth it, but just know what you're getting yourself into. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I gave you some ideas and if you're going to build one of these, hit me up if you have any questions. So good luck to you.